New in 3DS Max 2012 Subscription Advantage Pack is a new render pass system called State Sets that directly integrates with Adobe After Effects to allow you to create composited rendering layers directly in Max that, when rendered, are then sent over to After Effects in the form of a composite. The first time we invoke State Sets from the rendering menu, we're presented with a couple of different things. The first thing is a state. These are the things that we edit and set up. This is where we set up our render passes to go over to After Effects. The next one is the object layer, or the object uh, component to the hierarchy. And what we do here is we put any of our objects, such as cameras, lights, solids, or nulls that we want to send over to, to After Effects. The, all of those objects appear here. So you can see that we've uh, finished our scene a little bit more here. I've added some new materials and it's ready to be rendered and have render passes set up and everything sent over to After Effects. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we'll invoke state sets. And you can see that I've also actually created a couple of extra states. I don't have a lot of time to show you everything that I would probably show you, but we'll take a look at a couple of state sets in here. Uh, we'll add a couple of new ones so that we can um, see what we're doing. So we're gonna have a render pass that's just for the screens that are on the purple pieces of glass. We'll have rendered elements, which is everything in the scene and the elements that we would need to use in After Effects, some mats, some diffuse passes, specular things like that. We'll go ahead and set that up. And um, we're gonna add a, another pass here uh, just to render out the purple elements just uh, by themselves so that we can control how they appear on the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. We add a new state by clicking the plus sign and we can just uh, create a state here. And we're gonna call this uh, purple glass, so we'll purple glass, and we're gonna turn on the record button. Now, whatever changes I make at this point will be recorded, and when the purple glass state is rendered, those changes will take effect. So for example, if I go up to the uh, layers dialog box and I hide everything except for the uh, screens, I leave them out, that change is now recorded in that state. Additionally, if I go over to my render dialog box, and we look at some of the render elements, you'll notice that all of the render elements are off by default, even though I have them active. It's because I've added them and they were part of the base state. So we don't really need all of these render elements just for the purple glass. We only need to maybe pick a couple. So we don't need any of the mats for any of the other objects. So we're gonna go ahead and leave those off, but we want to turn on the mat for the purple objects, which is the glass. We want to turn on the uh, specular pass and we definitely want to turn on a diffuse pass. Also, we want to make sure that we render the entire range of the animation. So zero to frame 330, that's the proper size. We don't need to worry about the paths because those are handled over in state sets. So that state is done. So when I'm done recording the changes, I turn it off, everything comes back and we're good to go. The last thing I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add one more state that's basically an AO pass. So, because uh, although we could do it as a render element, we may want actually to keep that separate. So I'll just set up a pass for AO and I'll come over here and we'll go ahead and record. And I already have a uh, AO material set up here. And since we're recording, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the render setup menu and check elements. And these are all off. In uh, processing tab, we'll enable the override and we'll put that in there. So now we have an, um, an ambient occlusion material that's all set. So this change, this turning on of material override has been recorded. And uh, now we're ready to actually render all of these passes. So all I have to do is I can choose to render any individual state by merely clicking on it, right clicking and saying render the selected state, or I can right click at the top and say render all states. The last thing that we have to do is actually just control our render outputs. And we'll put in PNG as our output and we'll set the path. So now once we click set path, that has been set for all of the render states. All of the paths have already been set up. All we have to do is just render that. So we'll go ahead and choose render selected states. And when we come back, those will be done. So now that everything has completed rendering, you'll notice I've added a backplate pass here. Let's go ahead and set this up as a composite to move it over to After Effects. So I'll choose the uh, compositor menu and I'll choose a compositor view. And what happens is a schematic view, uh, uh, basically a node-based compositing view is created with all of the different states and the associated footage with that. What we can do is we can introduce all of the render elements into the schematic view as well. 
So we'll choose Compositor View RE, which stands for Render Elements, and what it does is it goes in and finds all of the render elements of all of the footage that's associated with that node. So you can see we have a lot more nodes here, but it's all of the render elements that we need to take over to After Effects. Another interesting thing here before we head over to After Effects is that we can see that all of our layers are piped into the uh, Compositor Output node, and we can actually do some editing of these uh, elements in here and you can see here I have my backplate output layer but it's at the top of our layers so we probably actually want that at the bottom so I can just drag this layer and move it down to the bottom and it brings the next element up to the top which of course in this case is the AO pass well the AO pass is something that we're probably going to want to multiply onto the other uh, fo other footage uh, layers beneath it so we can actually open up the layer you can see we can get access to some um, basic setups including blending mode. So I can just come in here and I can say multiply that and it will multiply on the layers underneath it. We'll choose the compositor link tab and what we do is we create an association, a link file uh, between the two programs. So I'll just choose reset link and we're going to go ahead and create a link and I have one here called comp output that I created earlier. We'll just reuse this file. We'll say save. We'll pop over to After Effects. I have an empty project here and we choose open compositor link from Autodesk and we're going to reset the link and we're going to create it using the one that we've just made and when we do that you can see that all of the footage comes right in and we'll just double click the composite that's automatically made and everything is put on the timeline everything is ready to be uh, uh, finished here in After Effects and output Okay, so back in Max, the very last thing that we want to do now is send over some of the 3D objects that we've been working with. I've uh, changed my timeline here, and you can see we are uh, moving on to the end of the animation where we have what will be a solid object, just a regular animated 3D plane, and uh, we haven't completed our logo design for that yet, so we need a placeholder object that we're just going to use in 3D space, and so we're going to send over this 3D object uh, to fill that role for us. We're also going to go ahead and send over our 3D camera. So to do that, all we need to do is, just like we did with any of the other states, we're going to go ahead and turn on our record. We have the plane selected, so the, uh, that node comes over. We'll go ahead and open up our layers, and we'll unhide the cameras. So those will then be added once we turned off our record mode. We have our solid and our camera object in there. And now notice it says update to link. So our connection is still live. I'm going to go ahead and turn off nulls and lights and footage because we already have our footage over there. We just want to send over the cameras and the solids. And we'll say update to link. We'll pop back over to After Effects. We'll say update from link. And here it comes over. Here's the solid. Here's the camera. We slide over on the timeline and you can see there is our solid. Now we can actually select this object and translate it anywhere in After Effects. And I'm going to open up our transform layer and we're just going to make sure that we choose everything. And we'll go ahead and just move it up just to show you that there's a, a connection between the two. We'll update to the link, pop back over to Max and you'll notice it says update from link. Let me get this out of the way before I click it and you'll see the position of the plane actually change so you can see that it's a two-way connection between 3ds max and after effects with render passes and layer management set up broadcast designers and motionographers can create as many elements as they need to directly within the application that's creating them and take them right over to after effects additionally scene states can be used for lots of other things like setting up scene visibility layer management and switching renders between different elements within the same scene it's an entirely new level of creative control not seen in 3ds Max before.